Nine people killed during an Army's medical training in Kentucky. What happened during the crash and the aftermath that followed? Four people walking into a hotel room, only three walked out. Why one is now in the hospital and another is on the run. And the drizzle has let up, but we've got some showers developing around Bear County. We'll show you the radar here in just a few minutes. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A police chase in Zavala County terminated by sheriff's deputies by road spikes. And now a San Antonio woman is charged with human smuggling and more. Zavala County Sheriff's deputies tried to pull over Rebecca Marie Rudd's Nissan Xterra on U.S. Highway 57 yesterday. That's near La Prior. Deputies say she had ignored a stop sign but then took off when they attempted to stop her. They ended up throwing down a device that deflated her tires and her Nissan then veered off the road into a field near Batesville. Rudd still tried to run away on foot but was caught. Six migrants inside the vehicle were also detained. A teenager is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after police say he shot a man west of downtown. 18-year-old Jason Harper is accused of shooting a man back on November 11th of 2021 at St. Christopher Walk. The arrest paperwork says Harper showed up at the victim's residence where the victim's wife answered the door. Harper asked about the whereabouts of another unknown man when the victim walked out to confront him. That's when police explain Harper shot him multiple times and took off running. He was chased and wrestled to the ground by witnesses, but managed to escape. However, officers say he left a gun behind. Police were then able to find him a year later with the DNA evidence from that gun. Police searching for a man with a knife who left a bloody mess inside a hotel room on the city's northwest side. That mess, the result of an argument among four people in the room. Sarah Costa there as the victim with multiple stab wounds is evacuated to a nearby hospital. EMS treating and loading up this man into an ambulance as he holds the side of his neck. This was a scene around 6.15 this morning after the man was stabbed in the neck and the forearm. San Antonio police say they got the call around 5.45 a.m. for a man with stab wounds at the Siegel Select extended stay off of I-10 West between Warsbach and Callahan Roads. When they arrived, they found the crime scene inside one of the hotel rooms on the second floor. Police say two couples were inside that room when two of the men got into an argument which allegedly led to one man stabbing the other in the neck and the forearm. Two women were in the room when it happened and are being interviewed by police as witnesses. SAPD says the victim will be okay and was transported in stable condition to a nearby hospital. Police did not verify what kind of weapon was used. Police know who the suspect is and are looking for him since he took off after the stabbing. Once arrested, police say the man will face charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. From the Northwest Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. A woman had to be cut of, cut out of her vehicle by firefighters after a crash that happened on Reba Street last night off of North Hamilton Avenue. Police say the woman claimed she was rear-ended by another vehicle before her truck rolled into an empty lot. Luckily, she suffered no major injuries and did not need to be taken to the hospital. But firefighters still had to cut pieces of her truck off to save her. Authorities found the woman not intoxicated and are investigating the crash. It appears that a man in his 30s lost his life in an effort to get a new truck. He was shot and killed by the pickup truck's owner. Police got the call this week for a stolen vehicle on Braysview. The truck's owners had tracked the vehicle down. They were using air tags and was found in a shopping center on Southeast Military Drive. But before police could get there, the owners arrived. The only thing police will say about the confrontation that followed is that the suspect may have pulled a gun out when approached by the truck owners. That's when one of them pulled out their own gun and shot the suspect. San Antonio police have a lot of questions for a man who they believe pulled the trigger, shooting a person inside a northwest side bar. The victim of that shooting died from his wounds. As Katrina Weber reports, they want to know how a night out turned into a nightmare. The last call of the night at this Northwest Side sports bar was the one that brought San Antonio police here. Officers say just before two this morning, an argument between two customers ended with gunfire inside this business, not far from I-10 and Wurzbach Road. They say they found a man here in the 9500 block of Console Drive suffering from a gunshot wound in his chest. His suffering, though, ended not long after that. Police say he died by the time he reached the hospital. 
The man who shot him was gone by the time the murder investigation began. What happened here wasn't a murder mystery for very long. Police say as they were doing their investigation, the suspect walked up to them, told them that he was the shooter and he wanted to turn himself in. They took that 42-year-old into custody to face a murder charge. Homicide investigators also hoped he'd give them some answers, explaining why he allegedly used gunfire to end an argument. According to officers, the shooting happened while the bar was still open, but no one else was hurt. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Nine people are dead after two Black Hawk helicopters crashed in southwestern Kentucky this week. U.S. Army officials say there were no survivors. It happened during a routine training mission in Trigg County, north of Kentucky, on the Tennessee border. The helicopters were with the 101st Airborne Division, and uh, investigators are explaining they crashed into a rural area where no civilians were affected. Several agencies went to help during the crash aftermath, like the Kentucky State Police, this is what they had to say. Kentucky State Police Post 1 received a report shortly before 10 p.m. on March 29th of an aircraft incident here in Trigg County. Troopers responded to the area and came across the wreckage of two military Blackhawks. We have been working in conjunction with the United States military to assess this scene. We continue to assess it as the morning comes. CNN reporting the nine killed were active duty service members. Their names will not be revealed until their families have been notified. And more news coming out of Kentucky. A bill banning gender affirming care for minors is now law. That means Kentucky now has a ban on surgery and medical interventions to change biological sex is against the law until the child turns 18 and, and is an adult in the eyes of the law. The measure also stops teachers from changing the students' preferred pronouns and requires schools to create bathroom policies using children's biological sex. Protesters gathered this week in Frankfurt as the state legislator overturned Governor Bershay's veto. It disrupted the House state proceedings. Some led out of the legislative chambers in handcuffs and zip ties. Supporters, meantime, praised the bill, particularly the parts that limit discussions about LGBTQ issues in school and give parents the right to opt their children out of curriculum if the curriculum if they disagree with it. They should have the say in every part of their life, and that's what this legislation is about. My children don't belong to the government. They don't belong to the school. They don't belong to some idea. The law will likely be challenged in the courts with opponents promising to sue. University Health partnering up with a nonprofit group to provide free physical reconstruction surgery for kids and teens. It's called Fresh Start Surgical Gifts. It's now accepting applications for surgeries taking place on June 24th and 25th, led by Dr. Ian Mitchell, lead surgeon of pediatrics for University Health. A team of doctors will perform the following surgeries that you can see on your screen. Uh, they'll do cleft palates and eye and soft tissue repairs as well as scarring. You can visit their website at freshstart.org to apply. Stevens High School and Goodwill partnering up to make a fashion show that is good for the environment. How do they do that? We're gonna tell you what they're showing off by being environmentally conscious. The Cowboys give an emotional farewell to Ezekiel Elliott how the team and coach are feeling with his departure. Russia returning to pre-Cold War activity. It's put a Wall Street Journal reporter behind bars claiming he was a spy. What this means for the former Soviet Union. An American reporter for the Wall Street Journal has been arrested in Russia. He's facing 20 years in prison. The country alleges that Evan Gershovkovic, an American citizen, was gathering Russian military secrets. However, Russian officials have provided no evidence to support those claims. In a close court appearance today, the 31-year-old reporter entered a not guilty plea and was returned to the detention until May 29th. The Wall Street Journal says in a statement that it vehemently denies the accusations and seeks the immediate release of their trusted and dedicated reporter. His arrest comes at a time of heightened tensions between Russia and the United States. You know, I think we can see it in concert with their nuclear announcements, the abrogation of their treaty 
obligations uh, as a way of just ramping up pressure on the West. Gershkovic is the first journalist from an American news organization to be arrested on spying charges since the height of the Cold War. Taking a look outside with live cam. Ugh. Yeah. But. Damp, drizzly, dark. But there's good news here. <laughs> yeah. We could measure this rain. We could. We actually will have those measurements for you. It's not a lot, but it's something. So we keep saying every little bit helps. Uh, still a little bit drizzly in spots, although the drizzle's letting up, and we're watching some showers now developing. We'll show you the radar here in just a second. The aquifer actually did go down today. It's down a tenth of a foot, 635.4 in your pollen count. Oak is in the high category, but down from that really high number yesterday. Molds are moderate at 600. That's a rise for that number, and pine and pecan are low. We'll look at the radar for you when we come back. Fashion that's stylish and good for the earth. Stevens High School students in Goodwill, San Antonio, getting ready to host its second annual Fiesta Sustainable Fashion Show. Tiffany Huertas takes a look at the clothes, the accessories, and the behind the scenes as students get ready for the big night. From the classroom to the catwalk, all right, Stevens High School students are ready to show off these outfits tomorrow night. From a Goodwill. He is wearing an amazing orange color, which is very hot right now for the season. For months, students have been sewing and putting together looks for their second annual Fiesta Sustainable Fashion Show in partnership with Goodwill San Antonio. So Mrs. Donovan took her class to our Petranco location and the students were able to pick out the garments and pick out items for the fashion show specifically. This program allows students to gain hands-on experience in fashion areas such as marketing, merchandising, display design, business management, and customer service. You know, Goodwill's dedicated to sustainability and giving items a second chance in our stores, and what it's teaching this young generation is that how important that is. It's all about the details and vibrant colors. The students will be showcasing 18 outfits at the fashion show. All the items were found at your local Goodwill stores. The process was really fun. It was definitely, like, we definitely had to learn to be, like, open-minded with a lot of things. Anna Roman is a senior at Stevens High School and is passionate about fashion. When I graduate, I plan to go into either fashion design or fashion merchandising and minoring in business. The fashion show will be held tomorrow at Stevens High School starting at 6.30 p.m. and it's free for the public. And I really hope people enjoy it because we worked really hard on it. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Looks All right, good. we already showed you it does look good. What doesn't look good is outside. It doesn't look good, but, but it you is know, good. But it is good. Our grass needed this. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Uh, it made for a horrible morning commute, but uh, it was good to see at least a little bit of rain. And it's not going to fill up the rain gauge, but we are seeing some measurable rain, which we will absolutely take. Uh, let's look at the radar right now. You can see these showers. So the drizzle for the most part has ended, but we're still getting some of these isolated showers that are working south to north. Some of them are heavy, but. Uh, if you do get a heavy downpour, it's going to last about 30 seconds or so and then move right along. It's kind of the nature of this activity. So let's zoom in a little bit closer on some of these showers. We've got a little bit of activity working through China Grove. Some light showers working through the airport, Hollywood Park. Again, this is light, but it is going to cause some slick spots on the road. And then as we look off to the east, this is where we see some of those heavier downpours right around New Berlin. Uh, we've got a quick shower that just moved right through. I mean, you got a downpour and then 30 seconds later it was gone. Uh, and that is working its way up towards I-10 near Zool, just to the east of that and uh, just to the west of Seguin. And I'll zoom out one more time here so you can get a bigger picture. I think the, the bulk of the shower activity is going to start to kind of move off to the east, but we still can see a few more showers here in San Antonio. I want to take you to TransGuide real quick. We do have an incident here at Loop 410 in McCullough. They were blocking off some lanes. It looks like more are getting through, but you can see the uh, responders there on the shoulder. Uh, the roads are still slick, and uh, you, we want to take it slow still. There's going to be several spots around town where you're going to see those uh, wet roads. The airport. At last check, tenth of an inch of, of, of rain, mostly drizzle, but it added up. So that's great to see. Stinson, seven hundredths of an inch. Randolph, seven hundredths of an inch. Bernie, about eleven hundredths of an inch. Again, not big numbers, but at least we can measure it. Uh, Seventy-one at the airport right now. Still some drizzle or a light shower coming down. Dew point is at sixty-eight in south southeast. Julie winds at fourteen. KSAT 12 hour forecast will bring rain chances down to about 20%, but we could see a few of those passing showers. 75 at 3 o'clock, we top out close to 78. Don't expect to see much sun today. There could be a, 
a peak of sun or two, but uh, not a lot. And then as we get into tonight, we'll add in some more rain chances going into tomorrow morning. You see all the clouds. There are some breaks down to our south. 73 in Pleasanton, 72 Kennedy, 66 Kerrville, 69 right now in Hondo, right around 70 degrees here in Bear County at the shower. And again, we should make it into the upper 70s uh, later this afternoon. Here's a look at the dew point trend, and this is important because it's going to be all over the map going forward when we're talking about humidity. Very humid today. We start to see the humidity drop off tomorrow. Front comes through. It's dry on Saturday. Humidity comes right back on Sunday. It's another humid day, and then we have some humidity to contend with Monday and Tuesday before another front comes through. And Monday and Tuesday will not only be humid, it will also be very hot. Uh, you see all the moisture that's streaming in uh, to Texas out ahead of our storm system, which is out to the west. Now, the bulk of the energy here moves north of us. So that's why our rain chances aren't great. Uh, it's not going to move over top of us and give us uh, a good chance of showers and storms. But we do have some small opportunities here. 20% chance today. That's around 2 o'clock. 5 o'clock still shows a couple showers here and there. Certainly can't rule it out. And then tomorrow morning, a couple showers moving through. This is 7 a.m. And then notice by tomorrow afternoon, sky's clear. We got a southwesterly wind that's going to crank up temperatures on your Friday. Then here comes our front. This cools us down for Saturday. Could be a couple storms along the front, too, but I think that's mainly going to be north and east of us. This is 5 p.m. tomorrow. And so uh, here comes the slightly cooler air. The, the weekend forecast 84. Well, less humidity, just a 10% chance of a shower. Sunday, though, the humidity comes back. We have a slight chance of a storm, 85. Here it is laid out in the seven day forecast. So let's look at here 78 today, but 90 tomorrow. That's that heat I was talking about with sun in the afternoon. A little cooler Saturday, 85 Sunday, more humidity, small chance of a shower or storm. And then Monday and Tuesday, that is some big time heat. 92 Monday, 93 on Tuesday, guys. Here comes summer. Yep, right around the corner. Time to jump in the pool. Thanks for that, Justin. <laughs> All right, Coach McCarthy comments on the release of Ezekiel Elliott, what Team Zeke says he hopes he'll play for after the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys general manager, we're not there yet, but Jerry Jones making headlines, and we'll hear more about it coming up in sports. Dallas Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones made headlines this week when he said the Cowboys didn't offer Zeke a contract prior to releasing him as a salary cap casualty. But he said he'd consider bringing Zeke back if he doesn't sign with another team. So far, he hasn't. Now, how difficult was it for Mike McCarthy to say bye to Zeke? I know my time, you know, what, what I admired about Zeke going back to the pandemic, you know, when we had our meetings out into the Ford Center and, you know, Zeke sat in the you know, first seat front row. And so, I mean, he's, he's very coachable, um, a great teammate, you know, he's, he's, he's loved in the locker room. So, I mean, I, all those things factor, but, you know, I think just like anything, you know, the, the financial, you know, puzzle, you're always trying to put it together and, and trying to, you know, build and grow your football team. So these decisions are always very difficult. Now, there might be a lot of love in the locker room, but Zeke named the Eagles a big rival as one of three teams he'd like to play for. Well, Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni addressed that and said they feel really good about their running back situation as it is right now. Now, with the second overall selection in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans are expected to take a quarterback. The two main names are Ohio State QB C.J. Stroud and Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. Carolina traded with Chicago to move up to the first overall selection, and they are expected to draft one of those guys as well. Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans was asked what's the most important thing he looks for in a quarterback. He said leadership. Is that quarterback a guy who can galvanize a locker room and rally the troops and get guys to believe in him? That's the trait, and it's <laughs> easier said than done because only so few guys can do that. Right, and they're special guys, and that's a special position where you can find a guy that his teammates can rally behind, teammates believe in him. That's when you know you have a guy. As a former Texans linebacker, he knows a lot about winning over a locker room. Ryan's also said that former Texans head coach Gary Kubiak has given him a shoulder to lean on during his early days of being a head coach. Now talking soccer, San Antonio FC goalkeeper Jordan Farr was named the USL Championship Player of the Week. He earned the spot after making five saves in a shutout win over Colorado Springs on Saturday including this amazing penalty stop in stoppage time to preserve the 1-0 win on the final kick of the night. 
it's just about doing the job at the end of the day. Like goalkeeping is is a, is a very specific position that doesn't have a whole lot of relevance in the broad spectrum of the game. But in those tiny moments, that's like where you kind of make your name, um, make so to speak. And so for me, it's just about being prepared in the right moments and not trying to do too much. SAFC midfielder Muhammad Abu made the league's team of the week as well. Now Jordan Farr is the uh, goalkeeper of the year from last season. He just got this contract extension. So, I mean, things are working out. Pay the man. Pay the man. <laughs> are you talking about yourself? Yes, that too. That too. All right. <laughs> A local businesswoman helping other entrepreneurs bloom. What sparked her idea to connect women with mentors and resources? They affect one and a half million people each year. Traumatic brain injuries. Now we're learning more about the potential long-term effects coming up in the next half hour. A look at the latest research and what it could mean going forward. Now let's take a look at what's going on in on Market Square. SA Live is after this show. And we're gonna see what the team is up to. Hopefully they'll uh, lively up this dry or dreary weather. Not dry, definitely damp and wet. We're having their infection fund coming up. Welcome back. We want to point out this little trouble spot that's happening here at 410 and McCullough, uh, right around the airport uh, and the uh, North Star Mall area. You can see there's a lot of activity on the side of the road, traffic moving along super slow on 410 toward the airport. Lots of flashing lights there. Uh, we believe it's some type of crash. We're not sure if there's anything more to that just yet. We're trying to get more information. Uh, but as we mentioned to you all afternoon and throughout the morning shows, the commute and the roadways are slick. So be careful uh, wherever you're going today as this uh, might have been a result of wet roads. We're trying to get more information and we'll get that to you as soon as possible. Meantime, take another look at this. Another community forced to leave their homes after a fiery train derailment. This time, it's Minnesota. Authorities say that a BNSF train hauling ethanol and corn syrup derailed and then caught fire early this morning. The rail company said ethanol was the only hazardous material on board. It said 22 cars derailed and four caught fire, but there were no injuries. Homes in an area half a mile around the site were evacuated. The Nashville community continuing to honor the victims of that deadly school shooting. Hundreds of people gathering at a candlelight vigil to mourn those three children and the three adults who were murdered. The victims include three nine-year-olds, Evelyn Deckhouse, Allie, rather Hallie Shrugs, and William Kinney. The three adults, custodian Mike Hill, substitute teacher Cynthia Peake, and the head of the school, Catherine Kuntz. Her family said that she gave her life protecting the students that she loved. A friend of hers got pretty emotional during last night's vigil. She was so professional, so prepared, so committed to her faculty and those sweet children of hers. It is said that she had left her office in order to block the way of the shooter and died in the process. Police say it doesn't seem that the shooter was targeting, targeting any of the victims specifically, rather just the school itself, but it is still not clear exactly why. Across the world, the Catholic community is awaiting on an update on Pope Francis's condition. The Vatican says the 86-year-old was hospitalized with a respiratory infection adding the Pope will need several days of medical treatment. This is just one of the latest health battles for the pontiff. In 2021, Francis spent 10 days in the hospital following surgery that removed part of his colon. A year later, a slight bone fracture in his knee forced him to cancel several trips. And as a young man, he had part of his lung removed due to pneumonia. Pulmonary physician at John Hopkins says the Pope's medical history should not be ignored. His age, prior lung conditions, and the lungs being involved in the infection, all of that should be taken seriously. This month marks the 10th anniversary of his papacy. Amid health concerns, Francis has said when the time comes, he may consider stepping down. New research changing what we thought we knew about how to treat brain injuries. CNN's Mandy Gaither with why our cure up to now may have been doing more harm than good. It's long been thought that people who suffer traumatic brain injuries are out of the woods after being treated. 
It was considered more like uh, breaking a leg where you have a period of recovery, but then once you reach a certain point, then things are, are stable. But a new study of more than 25 years of data is challenging that. Researchers at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center found that some traumatic brain injuries become chronic conditions requiring lifelong treatment. We actually see people changing um, long after their original injury. And actually, the thing you're least likely to do is stay the same. The researchers say some continue to have problems with thinking, problem solving, or regulating behavior and are often unsupported after initial treatment, which can make those issues worse. Those involved in the study are working to come up with new ways to help places like healthcare facilities, treatment centers, shelters, and even prisons better screen those with traumatic brain injuries and give the care that's needed. If we were to proactively manage um, traumatic brain injury, like we do diabetes, for instance, uh, to optimize someone's health and, and functioning lifelong. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. New findings show more than 43% of people who identified as Latino or Hispanic on the 2020 census didn't pick a listed race. The Census Bureau says about 8% skipped the question altogether and the rest chose some other race. In a statement, the agency says that supports previous research showing many Latinos don't identify with the current race categories. The government is reviewing those classifications for possible revision next year. Two reports out today suggesting a slight cooling off of the U.S. economy. The Congress, rather the Commerce Department, says the gross domestic product grew slightly less than expected late last year. Meantime, the Department of Labor reporting first-time jobless claims have increased. It says 198,000 people applied for benefits last week. That would put it above economists' expectations and up 7,000 from the previous week's number. The Labor Department says continuing claims are up as well. Overall, the numbers suggest companies are holding on to their workers. And I hope you're holding on to your umbrellas because it is drizzly out there. Will there be a chance of sunshine today, Justin? Uh, there could be a peak or two of sun, but not a lot. It's going to be a generally cloudy day. You're going to have to wait until tomorrow afternoon for the sun to come out. Once it does, we're going to get some big time heat tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we want to show you the radar once again because we have showers developing. Most of the drizzle is tapered off, but we still have these uh, passing showers you're going to see here and there. They're going to move pretty quickly, uh, dump uh, a little bit of rain and then move right along. So as you look at the uh, live radar right now, you'll notice uh, the bulk of the activity is now moved uh, east of San Antonio. We still do have a few light returns here and there, but you're starting to see some of those heavier downpours perhaps move towards the Seguin area. This little shower here will work right up into Seguin here over the next hour or so, and then around San Antonio. Uh, again, generally, generally pretty light here, other than one little shower up around Kirby that we're noticing that'll work its way up towards Windcrest here very, very shortly. And then uh, we should see an overall decrease in the shower activity by the afternoon. We still can't rule out a shower or two, but we won't see as much on the radar, at least here around San Antonio. 72 at 1 o'clock, 75, 3 p.m., 77 at 4 p.m. We'll keep in a 20% chance of rain, 78 the forecast high, and then look for some small rain chances tonight and drizzle redeveloping by tomorrow morning. I want to talk about the Valero Texas Open, too. Boy, the golfers are going to have uh, to deal with some Pretty wild weather here in the sense that winds will be switching around every day. Not great for golfers. The greens will be nice and soft today, but you get into tomorrow. We get the hot conditions. Winds switch around to the southwest, then they switch around to the northeast Saturday, and then back around to the south on Sunday. So good luck to the golfers. If you're heading out there, make sure you take some sunscreen tomorrow because the sun will pop out and it will be toasty, guys. Thank you, Justin. There's a group out there wanting to help women start their own businesses. We're going to show you an event that want, may make you want to open your own shop.